Ooh, what's up guys? And of course, always, welcome back to another PU battle, this time versus Miltos. Now before going in, of course, as you guys already know, Ultra Sunny Moon is just around the corner, and um, yeah, I have a few Wi-Fi battles I have pre-recorded that I'm going to upload, but they're not going to be fairly scarce now. Definitely, I feel that this is an end of an era, and uh, I do, did enjoy Sun and Moon as then, so I'm really, really looking forward to Ultra Soon coming out, and the things that will happen around that. So, with that said, you guys can see on the screen here, my opponent's team here is Lapras, Sangoose, Moal, Bridge Rock, Hakamo, and Lilligant. So, straight ahead, I can't decide which Pokemon is this rocker. It's definitely between Moal and Bridge Rock, and uh, I felt that my best Pokemon to lead off with here is Karakosta. Though I have a team here of Hitmonchan with Life Orb, and uh, I assume C, Rotom Fan, I was going to say with Frost. Uh, Rosalia with Violite, Spiker, yeah, just a standard set really. Life Orb Dug Trio and a Scarf Gumchu, which is a Pokemon I really wanted to use for quite some time but haven't been able to. I think PU really allowed it to be more usable, so definitely looking forward to trying that out. But versus this team, it looks like kind of a rough time since there are Pokemon here resist uh, its normal design adaptability, it's going to have a rough time. So my easiest lead last stated here is Karakosta since it is solid rock and of course also it's a defensive version with stealth rock. So, yeah, without further ado, let's, of course, as always, go into the match. So, I don't get the strongest lead here. He'll likely start off directly with Lapras. And I thought, alright, here comes Freeze Ride. Right? This is this is going to get scary fairly fast. So, with that in mind, you know, clearly, I'm going to switch out. I'm going to switch out to Rodon Fan. No, Frost. I said it again, didn't I? Uh, so, Rodon Frost can easily take a hit here, but it actually goes with Thunderbolt. And uh, it is a resistant hit and unstabbed, so that's way better for my side. Now, predicting him to switch out, I'll actually go directly for a Will-O-Wisp, as it's switching Great Wall, which I felt first was Bridge Rock, but no, it's the Mowal, and that's a very good thing, because having this Pokemon nerf can definitely help me in the long run, since this thing actually stings quite a lot, depending on the set. Uh, so from here on out, I'll just go for a safe Volt Switch. Uh, I do have fair switching towards this Pokemon, but since it burned, I can definitely get my rocks up, so Karakosta will fill the role for that, as my opponent here goes for a knockout, which is a very good play, since, well, let's face it, Leftovers is my only capability of actually getting a recovery back with my Karakosta, so for what it's worth, that's a fairly good decision on his side, as she's gonna switch out and go to Nani, which is the Hakamo. Um, now, this was a very sticky situation, because basically what I need to do here goes for knockoff to get rid of his Violite. Uh, as we see Dragon Dance, it's it's not too bad, but at the same time, this Pokemon is ferocious. As uh, you know, the knockoff will clearly connect, and we knock off the Figgy Berry. So, I'm basically wasting turns here. As it goes for Sky Uppercut, as you guys will see, due to the Solid Rock, we actually soaked that fairly alright. We go directly for a Skull. Baiting for the burn, which we do not get here, sadly. Uh, he'll continue on here with an Earthquake, which is going to do even less damage towards me. Um, though it still is in that area. As I go for Second Skull, basically banking for that Curse, which is not coming. And I don't feel that I can take the risk of actually losing my um, <laughs> my Karakos just yet. So I switch to Rosalia, trying to soak a hit. As Earthquake do way more than I thought it would, that definitely means that you know, Dragon Claw or Outrage will KO. So with that in mind, I had to switch in Karakos and sack it. So a bit of a stupid play there. I don't necessarily know what I was trying to get out with that, but definitely did not pay off at all. Uh, clearly, as I can switch in Apollo and just go for a pretty safe Mag Punch and knock this Pokemon off. Or not down. Off, down. No, it's, it's down. Mark Punch definitely win our fist, definitely are a very strong hit. As my opponent tail will go to Lilligant. Now this was a tough situation. Um I couldn't risk that he went for a C move, so I actually went for Helios, predicting either Sleep Powder or Quiver Dance, as he goes for Quiver Dance. So at this point I was basically, no, can I survive a Petal Blizzard? I cannot, or a Petal Dance, but I can survive a Gatorade, possibly. As luckily he goes for the Gatorade, and we barely cut it. Yeah, I definitely mean that, depending on his set there, that would definitely be a risk of me being KO'd, as I can retaliate with, of course, the ICMC, which is the most superb move ever blessed by the Rotom, which is a sub-zero slammer, and it looks great on him. Open the freezer, and, you know, the ice beam is coming, and that's actually, even the plus one special defense, that's a dead ligand. 
That's great. That's actually fairly cool. I definitely did not expect that to be a complete honest here. As I switch into Sangers, I don't have a switch in here. Uh, I went for the Will O Wisp in case he's trying to go for Shadow, what do you call it, um, Soul Sense or anything like that. He goes directly for Shadow Claw, and that's quite right, to be honest. As I can go into my Altorius, which is the Gumshoe, I do believe I go directly for a return. And uh, see, so switching Great Wall, and this, of course, is going to soak that hit fairly well right. And um, I don't want to take my chances with this Pokemon. Because even this adaptability boosted, it doesn't necessarily do too much damage. And with Rocky Helmet, you know, I am free falling. I'm doing a lot of damage. And since Burn will take him out anyway, I am better off switching out to something that can keep going. That Pokemon would be Roselia. Depending on his move, I should be able to wall his Pokemon out. That's. He goes for Stealth Rock. So, alright, rocks on the field, they're going to stay. I do not go in to tackle that Pokemon anyway, anyhow, because all I really wanted was to make sure that his switching wasn't Ready Rock, as his switching Lapras. You know, I have some speed, EV in my Roselia, it's fairly speedy, so I took a risk here, went directly for Gidrain, and we are able to actually outspeed a Lapras, which shows to be a more defensive set with probably no speed investment whatsoever. And what this means is that not only do we outspeed, we also survive the Ice Beam and are able to win the matchup versus it, which is really, really, really cool. They definitely not expect something like that, as uh, with that in mind, we do switch the situation quite a lot. This is going to bring in Jungus, and um, I'll be honest, like there are, all, all, there are only so many choices I have left, so with that in mind, yeah, I need to sack Roselia. At this point, Regirog and Sangus is his remaining Pokemon. Hitman Challenge should be able to take a, take both of them on fairly all right, and we should be in the wrap up of the game. As I go directly for the safe Mac Punch, of course, it's going to KO, and um, because the jungle, let's face it, it it's not going to take that hit. And Regirog comes in, and we are a very good spot. There is really no situation where I see Regirog winning towards us. It should be depending on what he said he is, but we go for Drain Punch. That does over half, so I felt that there is nothing he can do. And the only thing I felt that don't be Weakness Polish is Rock Polish. Uh, but even as that, you know, Mac Punch would have wrapped the game up. As we see Curse, so I was sort of feeling like don't be Rest Talk, something like that. That could be annoying depending on the moveset here. As we see Leftover, so yeah. At this point, I felt the game is a do. There is no way it's gonna be able to win, as it actually barely survives the Drain Punch yet again, actually, which I feel is really, really impressive, to be honest. But, yeah, it's, at this point, the game is wrapped. As it goes for Earthquake, it will actually do a fair amount of damage. Like, it's definitely close enough to KO, but it's just not necessarily whole way there, and we go into, of course, wrap the game up with a nice punch. So, to my opponent here, Mildos, thank you, of course, as always, for the game. Really, really exciting. Really liked the way you tackled this team, though clearly Hitmonchan on its own really did pressure this team quite a lot, didn't it? So yeah, like I said, we were kind of lucky, I guess, because Lilligans actually was the C Dream Dream Eater, which would very well have Kate or Roselia, no matter the situation there. Uh, and he told me later that he was saving it for that just because he knew he was walled out by it. And I really feel that that was a fair assumption. Had he gone for that against the Rotom, he would have been able to win the game. Uh, he missed out on that, and that's really well unfortunate towards my opponent, because I feel that he had a key opportunity of sweeping me, and um, I barely got off this one, you know, surviving it. So, for what it's worth, thank you so much, Miltos, for the game, and, you know, it really made the game very exciting due to it. And also, using Hakamo. Really want to see this Pokemon more in Ultra Sun and Moon. If you guys have missed out, I won't spoil it. All I really can say is that this Pokemon got better, no matter what stage, really, but more towards, of course, Kamo. Um, things happening with that mod that makes it more relevant, so definitely looking forward to see that more. I won't, I won't say anything else. I, I really feel like I'm spoiling things, and I really shouldn't. If you want to get spoiled, don't look at my other videos, which, with a warning, of course, about the new moves and new and whatnot. Uh, with that said, guys, as always, thank you for, of course, watching. There are only going to be a handful of videos left now before Ultra Sun and Moon is coming, and for what it's worth, you know, I'm sorry that I'm not going to be as active, but we have two more Wi-Fi battles to upload. We have two more who is really better before Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon comes out, so stick around for that, and of course, when once the game is out, uh, I am out too for a, a few days, clearly. Anyway, guys, thank you, of course, all those watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Till then, take care.